Um, so this talk is called the, the Connected Teacher, and it's a process that I've been working on uh, personally for the last three years, uh, and I've started working on with a few staff individually here. And I just wanted to summarize things and hopefully give you some ideas of what you can do with your own teaching practice. It's connected. It works. There we go. Fantastic. So the idea of a connected teacher is someone who uses technology to revolutionize. That's right, come on in. So it's the use of technology to revolutionize what you're doing in your classroom with your students and what you do as, as a teacher yourself. And whilst I started with a whole bunch of icons here for different technologies that I'm going to talk about, I don't want you to think this is just about the technology. And this is more than the technology. So I want to start with uh, forgetting about the tools and thinking about what the vision and the culture is. What are we trying to achieve? So there's an interesting link about this. I'll send you the slides later on. You can have a read of that if you want. That's uh, a fellow international school teacher who works in Jakarta and some interesting thoughts about how we get wrapped up in the technology at the cost of what we're trying to do. So let's start with that. My own personal vision is trying to become the best teacher that I can be, and I've found that technology is a good way to go through that. To go about that. And my culture is to try and open up to the world around me and embrace change, challenge, innovation, and creativity. And what I try to look at is how similar that might be to student culture and see if I can find a connection between the two. So that what I'm trying to achieve as a teacher is somehow in line with what the students are trying to achieve and who those students are becoming or who those students are. How many of you have heard of this article called We the Web Kids? Anyone? All right. It's, it's quite a, a, an imaginative article about the culture that our students are supposed to embrace and, and demonstrate. And a lot of it is uh, a little bit over the top. But actually, there's some very good ideas in there about how our students are different to us. The way that they approach technology, the way they are used to living with technology. So, uh, like us who haven't necessarily had all this connectivity our whole lives. So, if you want to think about trying to connect more as a teacher, it's important, I think, if you try and consider your own culture and the student culture to try and make a connection. And I would encourage you to read that article because there's a lot in there that relates to our students. I'm not going to go into that too much, but I just want to point that out. So why, why connect? Because connecting with others around you and using technology in this way takes quite a lot of effort. And it's not easy to sustain and it's not always easy immediately to see the outcomes. So what I found uh, especially in the last six months where I started to use some new systems, which I'll explain in a minute, I started to understand my own students better. I started to be able to engage with them more by understanding who they are and what they're interested in and what their view of the world is. Um, I've been at the, the receiving end of the stream of really amazing ideas. So I've connected with other teachers who are doing really great things and that's given me opportunities and ideas to bring those into my classroom. So that's what I said before about being the best teacher I can be. Uh, there's constant opportunities for change, and it's a great way to be inspired by your profession. I sometimes I find with teachers, we're all locked in our own little worlds, uh, doing our own thing, and the everyday can get you down. And looking at the great things that other teachers are doing and they're showcasing is a really fantastic way to say, hey, this is, this is great, we're doing great things, uh, and, and I should be inspired to do the same. About becoming a better teacher. I want you to ask yourself if you're connected to these things. So just have a look through that list and think about your own everyday teaching practice and what you do and how you interact. How many of those things are you connected with on a regular basis? The answer is probably not as many as you as you could be or you might want to be. Right? Particularly with things like education trends, often uh, people will wait until an expert comes to talk in school. But this is about being more proactive and trying to get out and, and discover those things yourselves. 
So I'm just going to quickly walk through the process that I've been through over the last years that I think has led me to be more connected. And I'll show you some of the tools that I've used and how I've used them, and hopefully you can take on board some of those ideas and apply them yourself. Uh, it's slow to start with, it takes a lot of time, but I really think the, the rewards are worth it. So the first thing is to, to listen to the world around you, to explore it and to find new things. Uh, so these are three sites. How many of you have uh, heard of and used two of these different systems? It's not too bad. Okay. Uh, so just quickly, Delicious is a system for uh, bookmarking and storing information on the web. But from this point of view, it's fantastic for finding things. So you can find other teachers who have collected digital resources, catalogued them, and you can go and look at those and use them. Um, Twitter is a great way to uh, to connect with other people, and when I said a stream of interesting ideas, that's primarily coming to me through Twitter. And thank you to Martin for uh, encouraging me to use it. I was originally really skeptical. I thought Twitter was just people, uh, you know, telling you what they've done every day during the day. You know, oh, I'm eating my lunch. It's great. So that, there's actually a lot of substance there. There's a lot of people who are tweeting about what they're doing in the classroom. Uh, and there's, there's just so many chances to connect. Dig is a, is a technology site that's full of interesting things. And StumbleUpon is a website where you can say what you're interested in, and it will feed you interesting websites along those lines. So if you take some time to look at these sites, you can start to discover just a whole host of new things uh, that you can integrate into your teaching. Some of them might not be immediately obvious, uh, but there's a lot of a lot of stuff out there. The second thing as you start doing that is to catalog and curate what you're finding. So how many of you have been in a situation where you found a resource and then you think back a year later and you can remember what it is but you have no idea how to find it, right? And you think, I wish I could put my finger on that right now and put it to good use. Um, so I know Martin has his Evernote uh, cult in school and quite a few of you are using that. That's a system for note-taking and maintaining records, right? So you can start finding things in stage one, cataloging them in stage two, and then using Evernote to come back and find them, right? Similarly, you can use Delicious, which is um, slightly simpler than Evernote. It doesn't try and store your whole world. It just tries to store links to websites that are useful. I know Rick uses Delicious. I mean, found some interesting things on there. Um, so over time, hopefully you start to gather a library of digital resources. Yes? Can I just ask what, what's the difference between delicious and uh, the bookmarks? Or okay. The problem with bookmarks is that they end up stuck in your web browser. And some browsers now can share them between your phone and other places like that. But bookmarks make sure that it's accessible everywhere. And you can also start to do interesting things like connecting them with other people uh, and, and having shared sets of bookmarks. So it's just a, a lot more flexible. Um, similarly, Twitter and WordPress are two sites that you can use to, to catalog. But I would start with Delicious and Martin will take a start with that so we can fight that one out later on, I guess. Um, I'm in a situation now where I have a bank of about a thousand resources that I've decided at some point over the last three years would be useful to me at some point in my teaching. And they're all cataloged with specific keywords, just like I'm encouraging you to do in, in uh, Given. And the advantage is that when I come to plan a lesson, I already have a whole lot of resources to draw on. So I'm not sitting down to plan a lesson and looking around the web thinking, what can I find? out there to do this. I've already got things in my mind and it's just a matter of going back, picking them out of my catalog and applying them to a lesson or to a unit. So I think that really starts to make you a more creative teacher because you've been looking for things and you can put your hand on them when you need to. The next stage is, is simply to think more and to create more. So my original idea when I started uh, teaching, I, I did my teacher training, was that I would be taking other people's resources and using those, and that would be really great, right? But what I've discovered is far more interesting is to create my own resources and to then 
Uh, and that, that inspires me to think more. And the more I connect with other people, the more I discuss uh, issues of pedagogy, uh, how we can interact with students, what students are talking about, the more creative I get and the more I think. So it's, been, it's actually been quite a revelation for me how much this has changed what I'm doing. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example that uh, I know Amanda was working on. Uh, Amanda's been working at something called photo prompts, which is where you take a photo, hopefully something stimulating, and you put a, a large caption on it and you give that to students as a prompt to start a unit. So it was great, I walked past Amanda's classroom one day and she had a photo of someone trying to climb out of a window and someone to hold them back and the kids were all gathered around looking at it. That's a great way to start them on some particular topic. So things like that you can start creating relatively simply uh, and you can move on to more complex things like movies, comics and using some graphics. But I've definitely found I've become more active uh, in my approach to teaching since I started focusing on this process. The next stage is to start publishing and sharing what you're creating. So as you start becoming more creative, you start having better ideas and you want to share them with other teachers. Uh, and I've been again doing this primarily through a blog that I maintain where I put things up and then I discuss them and share them with other people on Twitter. And actually, just taking the initiative to formalize your work so that it's ready for someone else to use makes it better. Because you have to think, well, uh, let's take my context and share it through the work and make it really clear. But let's make it good enough that I'm proud to put it out there and to try and get other people to use it. And that just starts to raise your game even more. And then you want to become more creative and you want to share more things. Um, I've also experimented with making a few short collages of different units that I've run. So I'll take some footage of the kids at work and then stitch it together to try and share those ideas of what that unit is about. And that again is part of a reflective process that gets you thinking more about what you're doing uh, and refining it for the next time around. The last one here, Creative Commons, is just a licensing system. So instead of copywriting your work and saying, I own it, it's mine, you can't use it. It's a way of saying, I own this, but I'm happy to share it with other people. And hopefully other people will then take your work and build on it. Uh, and, and it will become, again, more useful for other people. The final stage is, is to converse and interact with other teachers. So it's to use some of the same tools, but to turn them into a two-way discussion where you're really interacting with people. Uh, I don't know if, if Martin and you in one of these ed chats on Twitter. Right, so in Twitter these hashtags are keywords and this particular hashtag is used by a group of people um, who gather virtually at a particular time. Happens to be Wednesday morning here, it's like 7.30 plus I'm on the train. So I'm on my phone, I can follow this hashtag and see whoever's sending a message labeled with that tag. And every week they'll set a, a topic for discussion and there'll be like 50 to 100 teachers from around the world all posting ideas about this particular topic. And it splits us off into this crazy array of conversations between individuals and all these ridiculous ideas. And it's totally overwhelming, but it gets you to start thinking about new things. So I participated in one where the question was, should we limit the technology that students use in schools? Or should we let them bring in whatever they want and try and harness it? And it's great, you have two polar opposite approaches and you have people who are passionate about both sides and they want to talk about it. Um, and for me, being an open ICT um, teacher here, that's a great way to expand my horizons and my ideas. Martin. There's also hashtags for particular courses, you know, like yep. GCSE, French or something. Yeah. Um, you follow those. Yep. And people, if, so if someone wants to post a piece of, uh, like an idea that applies to that course, they might tag it with that and if you're following that, come up in your, in your Twitter feed. Um, How do you search for those different hashtags? Depends on what, um, on how you're accessing Twitter. So if you go through the Twitter website, there's just a search bar at the top. You just type in a keyword and filter. Um, I know Martin likes to use TweetDeck, which gives you a slightly different view, um, and it's a, it's a desktop-based piece of software. And, and then you can have multiple 
uh, different searches side by side with the keyboard. There's different ways to go about it. That's a bit practically if you want to ask questions like that and you want me to demonstrate, I can show you afterwards, right? So it might not interest everyone, but hopefully there'll be some people who want to try um, some of these ideas. The other thing that I found makes a difference is, is having a smartphone with a 3G connection. Because before where I was on the bus or the train, I could get on with my own work, but now I can continue these conversations. And that's actually a great time to do this, where I have five or ten minutes, it's not worth trying to get uh, something bigger done, but I can shoot a few messages back and forth and try and talk with some teachers. Um, this link here is something that I was introduced to via Twitter, uh, and, and PLN stands for Personal Learning Network. And the idea is if you, if you take this concept to its fullest, is that you have a network of teachers online that you, you probably will never meet, or you might see them once or twice at a conference, but they become the people that you turn to for new ideas and to share things. So some really great examples where people have gone to their personal net learning network and asked a question and got really great feedback, and that's inspired the work that they've gone and done. Um, obviously that takes a long time because it's lots of different people that you're dealing with and to try and form bonds with all these people and to bring them together into some kind of whole is quite difficult. So that's something I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I'm starting to get to the point where I have people that I can have uh, really productive interactions with and I can ask them ideas. Um, another, another interesting use for this uh, that relates to hashtags, there's a hashtag called comments for kids. And I've seen teachers who use blogs, like uh, Nicholas does a lot, uh, if they want to find other teachers and students to comment on their students' work, which is in a blog, they'll send out a message tagged with comments for kids, and that usually gets passed around all the teachers, and then some teachers will stop by and leave some comments for the students. So that's a nice way to connect your students with the wider world around them. So there's lots of different nuances and tools that you can start to draw people in. Um, so this is where I am at the moment, and I found it's, it's just absolutely amazing. In fact, the different references that I've put in here, there's a few throughout. All these ideas have come from using Twitter, uh, and just being exposed to people who are thinking about education in really different ways. So just to summarize, these are some of the things I've noticed uh, our colleagues doing in school already in this regard. And it's been nice to see. Um, and these are some of my own personal highlights, just things that have happened to me along the way. Uh, just new ideas every day, sharing my lessons. I've been involved in two global classroom collaborations where I've been able to get into another teacher's project and assist their students in their work. And that's quite rewarding. And then there's opportunities then for you to invite people back to your classroom to help your students. So to give you one example, uh, two students in my year seven independent learning class are doing a, like a paired blog with a school in St. Helena, which is a tiny island in the middle of the South Atlantic. So for our students to communicate directly with students who live this tiny speck of land in the middle of nowhere, and for, for those students to see how they live and how their lives are different, I think that's an amazing opportunity and it fits in with the IB learner profile and so many things that we're trying to create. Um, as I mentioned earlier, just having that bank of resources in advance that, that gives you like, creative ideas of how to teach. Um, my own thoughts about teaching and education, I'm still just a new teacher and, and I'm really developing lots of ideas, but they've really been aided by reading other people's work and thinking about it, and then writing my own thoughts about what I think education should be and how I think things should develop. I mentioned comments for kids. Uh, and the last one is, is sharing your work as an incentive to create. Okay, so this is probably the most powerful one for me. I try and share all of my units and my lesson ideas through my blog. Uh, and some other people do come and read it, much to my surprise, and they do pick up lots of ideas. But the more I do it, the more I want to do it. And the, I think the better it makes me as a, as a teacher and as a creator of ideas and content to share with students. And a lot of this is 
only really happened to me, um, it's really sort of coalesced into something that I can understand in the last six months, and it's, it's been really transformative. So, you can get connected and use your creativity to help other people. Uh, you can become more proactive, and you can become a changing teacher, and you can join this online faculty of connected teachers. And I think that's something that's worth looking into. So if I just go back to the beginning, hopefully you can see floating around my head all these strange tools that are starting to change what I'm doing in the classroom. Okay, is that fast enough? Is that record PD delivery time? <laughs> so hopefully you're all developed and you've got